Chia Pet, the pottery that grows. It's fun and easy. Soak your chia, spread the seeds, keep it watered, and watch it grow. And now grow a whole collection of fun with Chia Teddy Bears. Puppies, kittens, rams, bulls. There's even a Chia Tree to keep your pets company. Chia Pets and Trees, the pottery that grows. The Chia Pet and Chia Tree are available at Kmart, Rite Aid, Ames, and Woolworth. Makes a great gift. Don't you really want to know? Okay, I was wondering who the father of my baby was. All right, let's take a look. The Miss Cleo DNA test. I don't... <laughs> not the mama, not the mama, not the mama. You do that one more time and I'm going to throw you across the room. Not the mama! <laughs> They're solely searching for the father of your baby. Oh, it's the one that's very unpleasant, okay? Okay. Um, and he's also the one that had another girlfriend while he was sleeping with you. Yes, he did. Yep, that's him. That's the daddy. Okay. But you knew that. I wasn't sure. I don't know how. The baby looks just like him. Yes, he does. Yeah, so you were in denial because he has a funny little chin, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yeah, and the baby have that same little chin. Oh, my God. Whew. The cards can reveal things that you will never see by yourself. Call me now for your free tarot reading. Call 1-800-980-8637. I want you to know that I've smoked pot. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Right now, get a crunchy, cheesy Mexican pizza for just 99 cents when you buy a large drink. Taco Bell. Want some? Glamour Shots will create your exciting new look as our expert stylists pamper you with a full makeover and hairstyling. Be a model for a day, dress in the latest fashions and accessories, and star in an exciting photo session with a professional photographer. In just moments, you'll see your color video proof. Portraits of you make great Christmas gifts. Your photo session is just $11.95. Save 60%. Call 1-800-GLAMOUR now. Cause it's my show, you can't tell me what to do When life hands me lemons, I make beef stew So yo, I gotta go, it's time for me to rock it I put baloney in my left pocket Chia. chia Pet, the pottery that grows It's fun and easy Soak your Chia, spread the seeds Keep it watered and watch it grow. And now grow a whole collection of fun with Chia Teddy Bears. Puppies, kittens, rams, bulls. There's even a Chia Tree to keep your pets company. Chia Pets and Trees, the pottery that grows. The Chia Pet and Chia Tree are available at Kmart, Rite Aid, Ames, and Woolworth. Makes a great gift. Don't you really want to know? Okay, I was wondering who the father of my baby was. All right, let's take a look. The Miss Cleo DNA test. I don't know. <laughs> Not the mama. You do that one more time, and I'm going to throw you across the room. Not the mama! They're solely searching for the father of your baby. Oh. It's the one that's very unpleasant, okay? Okay. Um, and he's also the one that had another girlfriend while he was sleeping with you. Yes, he does. Where's Meredith Marks when I need her? The rumors, the nastiness, the rumors... <laughs> I can go there. <laughs> you can leave. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. Welcome back to my channel. Stand up comedian and pop culture vulture Jolene Lunzer here for No Offense, All Offense. I ran up the stairs, so I'm a little out of breath. Um, the show where we talk about pop culture, news, our favorite reality shows, all the dirty little things we watch and we might not tell our loved ones about, or maybe we do. I don't know, but we take a comedic look. We roast, we recap, we have a good time. So happy Monday. Hopefully you guys are all enjoying yourself. Ugh, I got lipstick issues. It's a Monday. Let me know you're here in the live chat. Sound off. I want to know all your thoughts, hopes, dreams, and opinions, even if they're different than mine. We can agree to disagree because I'm a very opinionated lady. Shout out to my friend Jason who makes these hats, enjoying the process. I'll link it in the description. I don't have his website right now, but he sent me and hype man husband Chell um, two hats and I am obsessed. I love them because they can be worn, you know, backwards. You know, I love a backwards cap. Forwards. Mm, mm. And I don't have to wash my hair. It's pretty great. So smash that like if you haven't already. Let's set a light goal for... 
459. 459, are you out of your mind? I am. So let's try to hit that like goal of 459. Subscribe. We're on our way to 40K. We're going to get there. I would like to get there before the Big Brother season starts this summer. That'd be pretty amazing. But I think... I think we can do it. I think we can do it. Why not? Um, and if you want to support the channel further, you guys know the drill. You can send a super chat while we're live. You can send a super thanks after the video post. You can join my YouTube membership. You can join my Patreon. You can hit me up on the Venmo Cash App PayPal. Everything is at the bottom of the screen and also in the description of this video. Okay. So um, I did get some super thanks after my video posted that I want to shout you guys out because I appreciate that. Alex, thank you so much for the super thanks. And Jamie, thank you for the super thanks as well. I did get some PayPals um, from you guys. And you're just, you're all so sweet. I wish it would be easier for me to see it. Um, Otter, shout out to you. And then I think I got some memos. You guys are hitting me up everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. Uh, let me see. Oh, I do. I got a couple of Venmos. Thank you, guys. Kimberly and Terry. Oh, Terry, that's for busy. Remind me, busy. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Money. Um, so thank you, guys. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you. And if you hit me up on the Cash App. Sorry, my Cash App isn't um, opening. Right? A backwards cap is always very fun. Oh, my God. Thank you. That's what my husband said because we got a black one and a green one. I go, which one do you want? He goes, you look good in green. And I'm like, oh, my God. I can't argue with a man when he's right. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I can always argue with a man. It's one of my many, many talents and also my hobbies. All right. Um, so hello, hello, hello. All right. We have lots to talk about today, Amy. Thank you for asking. I finally got caught up on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, the reunion. There's been two parts. Part three, the final one will be this week. I watched. Don't judge me, please. You guys don't judge me. But I watched. The Erica Jane bet it all on blonde. I did. I had to. I think there was only two parts. I think that's what I watched. Um, so I have thoughts and opinions on that. Um, Traders cast. Uh, I'll talk a little bit of Traders and what they've been up to. We will uh, talk a little bit of Oscars. Did you guys watch the Oscars? Let me know in the comments. I did it. But of course, I want to talk about the Oscar looks. I didn't watch the Oscars because I've only seen the Barbie movie. I'm going to watch Oppenheimer. Shh. Oppenheimer's Oppenheimer's yep I'm gonna watch that and then I know there's a lot of other ones that I have to watch but I'm just so busy watching reality tv and drama on youtube that I just don't have the time you know and I'm just I'm raising two strong independent dogs and one extremely strong and independent cat so I've been very very busy okay all right so let's first take a look at who CNN says is the best red carpet looks of the Oscars. Obviously, clearly, look at me. I am a fashion icon, a fashion guru, if you will. Um, so there we are. And it's pretty clear. It's pretty clear looking at me. Thank you, Lee. I'm going to try to get better about doing no offense, all offense most days of the week. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kathy C, thank you so much. Oh, Kathy says, for the first time in a very long time, we've actually seen three of the movies that won an award. Oh my goodness. I need to, I need to watch. I feel like I have watched some movies. I started watching this documentary on Oasis last night. I've been really into the 90s. I think that's just part of my personality. And it was on HBO Max. Um, I'll be honest, I fell asleep. It's hard to understand Liam and Noel, um, the brothers in Oasis. Um, I love an English accent, but theirs, I don't know what it is, but I am like, is this a different language? And it's just a lot of F-E, F-U, F-U, um, the Gallagher brothers. But I really wanted to, because Oasis hit so hard in like the late 90s 96 95 97 and then it seems like they just disappeared but they were so popular and i know that there were like problem with the brothers the brothers were uh <laughs> very upset i'm not sure they had like a john lennon paul mccartney type relationship but i really wanted to better understand them because i love i mean i've recently um subscribed to daniel johns from silverchair any silverchair fans here where are my australians at so daniel johns 
silver chair, a very popular um, alternative rock, kind of punky, inspired a lot by Pearl Jam uh, band in the 90s. I had a silver chair poster above my bed when I was a teenager because I thought Daniel Johns was the cutest piece of cute that ever cuted. And I really liked Silverchair's music. And then I wanted, I was like, where did they go? Do they tour? Because now I'm on this kick now that I'm in my 40s. Me and my friend Katie are like, let's go see all the bands we might have already seen when we were young. But let's see them again or for the first time. And so we went to a see Bush, which was amazing. I know Gavin problematic at best um, with his relationships with women and Gwen and all of the above. But oh, I'm sorry, hit me with a glycerine and I forget all about that. Proving that there are some men in your history, in your memory, in your past that you can just be like, yeah, douche nozzle city township, but whew, gets the motor running, if you know uh, what I mean. I don't know because I didn't finish the documentary. I'll get back to you. But again, I was bored. I fell asleep. But I subscribed to Daniel Johns uh, of Silverchair, and he's had a lot of issues. I think he was married to Natalie Imbruglia for a little bit. And he did like a documentary. So still doing interviews, but he doesn't talk to one of the bandmates of Silverchair. So it looks like they're never going to get back together. <sighs> it's just that it proves again that every Taylor Swift song is factual. We are never, ever, ever getting back together. So that's where I'm at. Let me know if you want to talk a little more 90s stuff. I've been, I mean, I think we've talked about this before. I've been tinkering around, or maybe I'll just add a little, little segment here and there um, to no offense, all offense, but eventually I'm just going to have a 90s podcast where we just talk about things from the 90s because it's just, it's so fun, right? A, a 90s band recap, Wanda. Thank you. I love it too. I'm just always wondering where these hotties are. Where are these hotties? that used to, you know, that were a part of my sexual awakening. Where are they? Where are they? Huh? Where are my teenage loves? So I stalk them on the internet. Ooh, Apollo Cole. Yes. Uh, maybe they'll get the Lilith Fair back together. I never went to a Lilith Fair. Is it? I don't think it's still happening. All right. Let's get to the Oscar looks. All right. First up, we have Zendaya. Um, oh, my God. She looked perfection. I don't know if those are palm trees on her dress, but she looked so good. If I could be Zendaya, I would. I can't. I'm too old. And amongst many other things. But she looked old Hollywood glam, just classic. A classic beauty, as they would say. Now, I'm not going to know all these people, and I should, but they'll hopefully give us their names. Okay, I do know who this woman is, and I thought she looked really beautiful. She was in the movie. What was that? It was last year's... Um, Okay, so Michelle Yao, Yao, she looks very, I mean, she's beautiful. Um, and she was in that Everything Everywhere All at Once or something. I started to watch that movie. I didn't finish that either. It's crazy. I can watch the junkiest piece of junk, trash, but when it comes to things now that are actually well-written <laughs> movies, like Oscar-winning movies, I'm like, mm, nah, they're not screaming at each other enough. Did anyone embezzle any money? Did anyone go to jail? Are they threatening to hurt one another? I'm mm, not really interested. Love this look. Interesting with the watch over the, <laughs> you know, you got to get your steps in. You got to get those steppies in. So very good. Um, now, I know that this young lady won her first Oscar. So Divine Joy Randolph, um, she won her first Oscar and she won for Best Supporting Actress in a movie I didn't see again. Love it. It was giving me Phaedra from uh, Traders. Parvati, or not, or what Janelle wore a dress because uh, the Traders people went to some of them, went to the Oscars, Peacock sent them, and Janelle had a dress that had like the feather sleeves like this, which was giving me Phaedra as well. So Divine is wearing, oh, it's a custom Louis V. Oh my gosh. Okay. Kathy says she was in the holdovers. What is that movie about? For some reason, I just think every movie that's nominated this year is Barbie or about World War II. I don't know if um, there's any in between. So I'll have to watch that because she looks very good. Then we have this cutie patootie. Um, I always forget his name, but uh, oh, is it Cillian? Cillian Murphy? 
you wear a custom oh, Versace with a gem brooch or brooch, if you will, designed by a Hong Kong based designer. Okay. He's in everything. I feel like he's in, he just popped up and then it's one of those actors. They'll pop up and then later I'll go back and watch movies and go, oh my God, he's been here all along. The same with Kylie Jenner's boyfriend. I'm sure he has a name, Willy Wonka. I was thinking, where where'd this dude come from? And then I just started watching things like Lady Bird and other old older movies now, I guess, and pre Panikukin, if you will. And I was like, oh, he's been here all along. He's always been here. Kylie Jenner's boyfriends have always been here, but I only know about them. Oh, Killian. Oh, really? Killian. I love it. I love it. He just has that like face that like he's got like this beautiful Play-Doh face. I just I want to squeeze it in his lips. And are those his real lips? And is that his first nose? Because that's impressive. All right. He looks good. He looks handsome. Throwback. Love the bangs. Love the bangs. All right. Um, I don't know who this beauty is. Hey, Teddy. Greta Lee. Oh, wait, I have heard of her. Okay, well, she look Greta, Greta looks good. I don't know why they put those pockets in the front of her dress that kind of drape the drapey thing. They could have done without the pockets in the front, but she looks beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, and this is the movie I actually do want to see. It's like Flowers with the Moon Child or something. And this woman's in it. It's with Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, oh, Killers of the Flower Moon, which I know is a book I'll never read. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to pretend... I'm well read. If it's not about Buffy the Vampire Slayer or other vampire slayers or ADD, I'm probably not reading it right now. Or David Sedaris. That's pretty much all you're going to catch me reading. Um, let's see. Lily Gladstone nominated for Best Actress. Oh, so she lost because I do know that Emma Stone won. Shout out to Arizona. Your girl Emma Stone won. Uh, Lily Gladstone. Killers of the Flower Moon. Every time I've seen an interview with her and Leonardo DiCaprio, I feel bad for her because it's very awkward. And I just don't know if it's because Leonardo DiCaprio doesn't know how to communicate with women over 25 or over a size two. I feel like that's the case. You know, do I love myself some Leo? Oh, my God. 90s Leo, Romeo and Juliet, 1996, Baz Luhrmann version of Romeo and Juliet. Changed my life. Um, but now I just don't know if he knows how to communicate with a real lady, a real woman, okay? A woman. But she looks gorgeous. Gorgeous. Again, I know that's a train. Okay, no, I understand the train now because it's almost like a cape. And she they're just showing the detail on the cape that shows when she walks from behind. Okay, I get it. I get it. Lily, you killed it. Obviously, it's our Barbie girl. Now, I heard some people saying it looks, you know, she looks like she may be just woke up. <laughs> Come on. If any of us woke up like this, I would be like so happy. Okay. I would not. Would I be on YouTube? I would probably be modeling or something. Um, but I do like kind of the understated makeup, very Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk. I love the dress I, because it has rouging in the front and anything with rouging, especially on a swimsuit, I'm going to look at because, you know, not that, um, the beautiful Margot Robbie has tummy things to hide. This is more for just aesthetic, just the design. But for me, I just want to ruch it up all over the front, except for my tots. My tots don't need ruching. Those babies are just fine. But I do love this dress. It's like, ah, it's like fresh tar. No, that's not good. Um, It's just so shiny. It's just like a fresh black top basketball? No, I don't know. It's just really nice. It's a really nice. Okay. So I have to watch poor things. I'll love it. All right. All right. I'm gonna have to write this down. Right, Otter? I like her hair too. It's very natural looking. It's not overdone. It's just like, uh, um, Jamie B says, I met Leo when what's eating Gilbert grape was coming out. I got a pick with him somewhere. <laughs> you know where it is, Jamie, you pull it out regularly. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am a fashion aficionado, Savannah. Fresh tar. It just is, you know, the smell of fresh tar in the morning is just really good. Um, oh, no, it's the cheater. I shouldn't speak like this. It's Ariana. 
Grande, not to be confused with the great Ariana Maddox. And I'm sure all the Ariana heads were so happy. I do think she looks, she always looks cute. She's Ariana Grande. Uh, but she is dating someone who was married and had a kid. I mean, most on him. Are they getting married? I don't know. And he looks like her brother, Frankie Grande, which is a little creepy. And they were in Wicked together, which I think is coming out soon. There's like a motion picture version of Wicked. I think they were in together. And okay. I like the baby pink. I like that it's just, it looks like it's just, you know, when you have a Ziploc bag and you don't get all the air out and then it's got the extra puff. It looks like an extra puffy Ziploc bag, which can be frustrating, but also beautiful if you're living in the moment. If you're enjoying being present, just think of that air could be anywhere, but it chose to stay with you. And that's, that's quite philosophical, quite beautiful. So Ariana, not Maddox, Grande, looks nice. But how does she sit down and how does she go potty? You know, she's good. Hopefully there's hopefully like a little thing she can just pull off. Maybe she doesn't potty. Maybe she's catheterized. I would probably have to be catheterized in this dress. Well, I would have to be like bandaged up and spanked to the high heavens to get in this dress. But there's just a lot of opportunity to get pee pee on it. Just so much. And don't even get me started if there's anything else going on down there. So we do have a little satin heel. Okay. Very moonlighting. Very 80s. Very Lisa Vanderpump in a uh, music video back in her day. That she Maybe that's why I like it. She looks like a comfy bed. It's a comforter. You're right. It is. It's a duvet with the comforter inside and you know the duvet always has like the that why does do why do duvet covers always have a little extra on the side where it just dangles and it's it's not full why don't the actual duvets fill the duvet covers because you tell me this is a king size duvet or comforter whatever the hell it's called and then i get the duvet cover that's a king size and i put it on it don't fit it's like oj you know, if it doesn't fit, you must go. It's, it doesn't fit, but it's not too tight. It's too big. It's too big. And then it's just hanging there, sadly. You got all this poof and this volume. You know, it's like Cindy Crawford hair in the middle and my fine hair at the ends. It's not good. Someone's got to fix this. Someone's got to fix the duvets and also the um, whatever's going on. But it, I would lay on her. I would take a nap on Ariana, not Grande. No, it is Grande. I would have a grande nap on tiny because Ariana is a grande with, you know, her name and this dress. But in real life, she's she would be considered the kid size or a tall, a tall Starbucks. You know, when you get a tall Starbucks and you're like, what am I going to do with this? Is this a tester? Like when you go to the go-gurt places? I don't know. So, Kathy, you understand. And thank you, Rachel. Says I can't with these, these descriptions. Me neither. I don't even like that my brain works like this. Um, Kathy Z says, ugh, duvets and covers never match. The ties are the same number as the loops for the ties. It's it's infuriating. It would, ooh, Becktown, it would be better. It would look better without the pink hefty, hefty cinch sacks on the side. Yeah, hefty, hefty cinch sacks. But she could be carrying her little husband. He's kind of little. He's like Polly Pocket, troll size. No offense, all offense, again. We will offend, but we don't mean to, unless we do. Everything I say is true, except for the parts that are false. Everything's alleged. But maybe her little tiny husband or new boyfriend, whatever he is, is in there. She wanted to bring him, but she knows that it's, you know, it's it's not, they're not well received yet. You know, when you are, uh, your relationship is the product of like a big affair, it's not, it's not going to be super well received yet. So maybe she put her husband in there and that's comfy for him. He's, he's cheapy. He's cheapy. Okay. Oh, I like this lady, Carrie Mulligan. I just did, speaking of movies I have watched, I rewatched um, The Great Gatsby with the wonderful Carrie Mulligan and Leonardo DiCaprio, because sometimes you just need to forget that he only dates people under 25 and remember Leo when he was kind of around 25, 30, something. And everything made more sense. Back when life made more sense, okay? So Carrie Mulligan's custom Balenciaga gown featured a classy flared mermaid skirt. Oh, it is really classy. Those arms are, wow. Uh, the Best Actress nominee. Oh, she was in something? 
oh, pop culture vulture over here. Let's pay attention. Smash that like, you guys, if you haven't already. Uh, accessorized with Fred Layton jewelry and was one of several stars to wear black evening gloves. I love a glove. I love a glove. Mostly because I have sweaty hands and people always want to shake. And I'm like, oh, please don't. I just, I'm just a sweaty palmed girl. It just they're, they're just moist at all times. Um, so I love a glove. And also germs. But I guess germs can be. You get what I'm saying. So Carrie looks great. She's got a little bobber. Super, super cute. Thank you, artist, for the first super chat of the live. Artist says, after watching last season without my husband, I got my husband hooked on the season of Traders, And now he wants to watch the first season. Oh, I'm so jealous of your husband. Well, he gets to watch it with you. And also that he gets to watch Suri's season for the first time and just see the magic that is Suri. Oh, I'm so excited for him. Mm. But also this dress kind of looks like a toilet brush. No, or a duster. You guys are saying makeup brush vibes. Kara, that's good. Thank you so much, artist, by the way. Um, oh, Kathy C says, I love Carrie Mulligan. Been a fan of hers since she did an episode of Doctor Who in the late 2000s. I think everyone was on Doctor Who at one time, right? That's amazing. And shout out to artist's husband. Enjoy season one of Traitors. You're so lucky. You're so lucky. Oh. Anna says, Carrie, Margot Robbie, Billie Eilish all have the same stylist. They do? Oh, my gosh. I thought Billie Eilish or Eyelash, as my niece calls her, looked so cute. She looked adorable. Okay, I don't know who this man is. Um, Riz Ahmed arrived in a black ensemble by Marnie featuring knee-length coat. Okay. 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 No K. No K. I know. It looks like he is literally on Battlestar Galactica. It looks like this is post-apocalyptic. We had to find some burlap sacks, put it together, fray it up to look extra desperate. Um, I don't understand it. What's going on in the front? No. It's it's fraying. It's The strings are coming off. No, I do love a knee length jacket on a gentleman, on a lady friend, on an any friend. And the shoes, no. Mm -mm. Just wear Doc Martens, bro. But it does look like a post apocalyptic, like, we have to get through the right wormhole. We're never going to, we have to fight the other galaxies. It's just, it's too much. But maybe he did come from a wormhole. We don't know. We don't know. But it, it looks very like, what the frack? It looks very. Battlestar Galactica, where's Starbuck? What's happening? We gotta, you know, save our little piece of the galaxy universe. Something. Russian spy, Kara, very good. Oh, Cammy, he does. He would have looked so great in one of Alan Cummings' outfits. Mm-hmm. 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 Graphics says he was in Star Wars. Well, that makes sense. He's still in Star Wars. And that show on HBO that I can't, was he in the recent kind of sci-fi show on HBO? Because he's dressing like it. He's a cute guy. But I mean, land the ship, land the ship. You got to land the ship. Men in black vibes too. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's still in character, which good for him. You know, there are a lot of actors that remain in character and that need to, maybe he's going to be in the next Star Wars. So he's like, might as well just, you know, he just looks like he's like going to scream. I'm from the Republic, you know, wherever the Republic is. Okay. Oh, it's Melissa McCarthy. Why did they do that to her hair? Why did they something about marry her hair? I do like a big front, but this is, I feel like they tried to Miley Cyrus her a little bit. And this dress is not good. No, no. Melissa McCarthy is adorable and talented and so funny and amazing. And they did her so dirty. The red would have just been fine. Why do you throw the pink on there? I don't like it. Why'd you do that to my girl? They put sperm in her hair. They tried to dolly it up. And if you are going to do that, you need to go big eye, big eye, big eye. Like your lashes need to fly. You need to call Phaedra Parks and your lashes need to fly. You need a big eye. No. <sighs> Oh no. And the, why, why did you, why, why did you throw that pink on her? Oh, it's just, and it's just there. It's just hanging. It's like a coat. 
looks like half a raincoat. I don't like it. And the colors, it's too clashy, clashy. Not the look. Mm -mm. What is this poor things, you guys? Oh my gosh, is this the big movie, that one? The pink screws it up for me. It really does. The red would have been fine. She looks great, snatched, beautiful. The hair, I need more movement in the top. Or all back kind of big. I don't like it. Can't have a loud dress and loud hair at the same time. Cammy. <laughs> we see each other. Okay. Poor Melissa. Poor Melissa. Oh, and this is the Greta Von, uh, what's her name? Oh, Greta Gerwig. There's no Von. There's no Von. So the director of the Oscar-nominated Barbie. Um, it's... Mm, I... Uh, no. No, she's beautiful and she's great. But I feel like she just directed Barbie. A fantastic movie. And they just gave her this? Uh, or like a jeweled headpiece or, or like a little jeweled barrette or something. I'm just not feeling it. She's very beautiful. Obviously very talented. It's Gucci. It's champagne colored. No. Mm -mm. Too blendy. No. Diamond encrusted necklace. Okay. All right. With the diamonds. Uh, it's, yeah, it's plain. It's plain. And she's not plain. She's excellent. I was at Target last night. Shonker. And there was a lady there, and she was so cute, this little older lady. And she had her wig askew, and she was talking to me and like, oh, did you see? You know, she, we were talking about, like, the Hello Kitty sweatshirts and how they're bringing nostalgia back. Because everybody wants nostalgia back after the panic hookin', where all of a sudden we went from 2020 to 2024. And we're like, where is time? What is time? What's happening? And she said, have you seen the Barbie movie? And I said, I have. She goes, is it good? I haven't seen it. I go, oh, it's so good. And she goes, oh, I don't know. I just, I can't, I don't want them to ruin it. <laughs> and then as she was kind of explaining more of why she think they would ruin it, I was like, oh, she's definitely going to think it's ruined because it includes feminism. And this lady was adorable, but I'm sure she's, you know, she's of a generation where she's like, don't shove that shit down my throat, sweetie. All right. Shave your pits. Um, super adorable. So I told her to watch it. And then I walked away really fast because I thought uh, I should have told her it ruined the movie. <laughs> it ruined the movie because I don't think she's going to like it, but she's so cute. So if you're out there, I hope you like it, lady. Um, but Greta, no. Greta, no, 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 no. Too close to your skin, skin, skin. No, 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 no. All right. Oh, I love this lady. I don't know her name, but I just... Speaking of which, I have watched some movies. I'm just eight years behind in movies. I watched the movie she was in that Olivia Wilde directed while she was having the affair with Harry Styles, who was in the movie. And let me just tell you, Harry Styles, ooh, sir, you can't have it all. You can't do it all. Okay? Bad acting. No offense, all offense. It was very bad, Harry. There were points, and I don't know if I've talked to you guys about this before, but Oh, Florence and the Machine. Mm -hmm. Love her. Yeah, her name is Florence um, Poog, Poog, Pug, whatever. Love her hair. So cute. Um, now, this is kind of the little flippy thing that they failed on Melissa McCarthy. This looks really cute and fresh and awesome. Like, like I know. But the Darling, it'll be okay, Darling or something, the movie they were in. Something Darling. What was the movie that Olivia Wilde? Uh, Olivia Wilde Darling movie. Okay. Uh, Don't Worry Darling from 2022. Oh, not that old. A couple years old. I watched that recently. Florence is in it, this actress, and she's so good. And she's paired with Harry Styles. And let me just tell you, when you see a really good actor with a singer, you know it. And there were scenes where he was crying. You know, like he needed to be so emotional. And a secret, a little if most people probably know this, but if you don't, when someone has an emotional scene like that, they tend to put the camera on that person. They're going to show you that through a lot of his emotional scenes, the camera was on her. And that's a dead giveaway that he couldn't deliver. <laughs> so I was like, oh, Harry, oh, Harry Styles. Um, really? It was actually a good movie. Yeah, I think. I think it was looking back, um, but she was so good in it. Um, lots of sex, so much sex. It was just like, 
sex on the table, sex. On, but then as you, you know, watch the movie and find out, you're like, oh, OK, because it's like women cooking and then move. There was a scene that was so unbelievable. And I was like, this had to be written by a man. But it makes sense once you get to the end um, where she sat home and she made this beautiful meal and a roast and all the stuff stuff and the stuffing and she set the table and it was gorgeous mid-century modern palm springs beauty and he came out from work put a suitcase down and then they started boning on the table and they pushed the roast off i was like you can eat the roast you or just take it to another table or designate part of the table for your sex and part of the table for your roast all of the green beans mashed potatoes fresh butter all on the ground and i was like that is all that hard work it's not like you ordered out. She didn't Uber eats it. She made it. I'm like, this is not believable. No woman would do that if they worked that hard. No. Mm -mm. I would eat. I would eat the thing. Okay. Uh, Melissa says, I liked Harry in My Policeman. That movie is so good. Okay, I'll have to see that. Because in this one, I was like, he had moments where he was good, but um, next to her, he could not compare. So I love this look. I love that it looks like it just rained on her skirt. I love the necklace. I love the the booby area. I love the makeup. I love her hair. Everything is great. The rings, the nails. Oh, look at the freaking the platform stripper shoes. I love the stripper shoes. I love everything about this outfit. It's like a little weird, but just weird enough. It's so great. So, so good. Okay. Um, handsome Sterling K. Brown wore Dior. I mean... But why is there a long piece? Why are you going to do Sterling like that? I mean, very handsome, obvi. But why is there a long piece of the coat? You see that? I don't know. It's black there, so it's navy. And what is that? Is that a scarf? No. There's some kind of satin something. Oh, my gosh. I Why did they Why did they do that to him? Ugh, this makes me sad. All right. My allergies are acting up. We're going to hit a little Leo. Be right back. You stars! <laughs> Is it a sash? I don't know, Otter, but it's weird. Why would they do that to him? Just the navy suit with like the... Uh, I don't know what that is. The navy suit would have been fine. Everything, the cufflinks. I mean, I'm not really interested in men's fashion that much, but this... That's weird. Other than that, killing it. Shoes, great. No Herman Munsters here. Love it. But yeah. Yeah, men's clothes. Boring. Bring a book. Um, Another suit, but he looks good. Oh, Regina. 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 You guys, this is beautiful. With the peekaboo leg and the shoes that look like she just dipped her feet in glitter. Everything, makeup, hair, tattoo on point. Oh, she looks so beautiful. What is this? Uh, so Regina King wore an eye-catching orange uh, Versace gown. Okay. Oh, so beautiful. She is beautiful, right? Oh, such. This, housewives take note for future, like, reunions. Wear this. Regina looks so good. Oh, she looks beautiful. And she's so buff because she gets locked out of the house a lot, allegedly. And then she has the little app, I think, on her phone. And she can go to town and buy stuff. If you've seen that commercial for like Capital One. Oh, that Capital One money has been good. Does make her skin glow. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I love an orange. I love orange. Oh, he almost cried during nominations. It was so cute. He did, Lucy. I love your name, Lucy Furious. Oh, my gosh. Right. My allergies are the worst, Amy. My nose runs. My eyes are itchy, watery. It's just bleh. But yes. Oh. Black gal, yes. Yeah, such a good color for spring. Gorgeous. Because it's not like an orangey. It's not a Halloween orange. This is like a very nice, springy, beautiful tangerine dream. And the the train in the back. Ugh. And the hair pulled back. I just love it. I love it. <laughs> Ryan, stop looking at me. He is always looking at me. Ryan Gosling. Okay, Ryan. That's a lot of buttons on button, but I'll give it to you because you're Ken. It's fun. I think it has, it's glitter, right? On the little jacket and on the shirt. He looks good. I mean, he's Ryan Gosling. All right. I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to say, yeah. Ryan Gosling nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Did he win for his performance in Barbie? Arrived in a custom Gucci. Of course he did. 
suit lined with silver sequins. Oh, sequins. But that's like, I can almost see his nips. Oh my God, you slut. Ryan, you slut. Stop being so slutty. Why is he looking at me like that? He's always, stop it. Ew, gross. God. Get back to the Mickey Mouse Club where you belong. I'm married. I am married, Ryan. He is so horny. Okay. Looking good. Oh, Emma. Emma Stone looks really cute. I know some people might be like, why is that skirt sticking out like that? It creates hips. All right. I thought she looked great. And I won. And I didn't win. She won. <laughs> I should have won. I should have been nominated. I've done so many great things here on YouTube. Nomination worthy. Um, I thought she looked beautiful. So she was nominated for Best Actress, and she went, oh, so that's what Poor Things is. Oh, because it's, like, quirky and weird. Yes. I saw the previews for this, and I thought, I want to see that damn movie. That's a movie I do want to watch. Now I know what you guys are talking about. I'm so, I, I didn't ask for it, okay? I'm the victim of Ryan Gosling lusting after me all the time. It's, like, so annoying. And I'm like, my husband is here. He's in the other room, okay? He doesn't know. No. Um, he knows. Uh, uh it's giving girls dress up. <laughs> it is giving that. That's probably why I like it, Rachel B. Because um, what's uh, Billie Eilish was wearing those little girly dress socks with her outfit, and I loved it. I love it. I love that nobody likes it but me. Okay, Amy likes it. I love that you guys. You guys are probably right. I'm probably wrong, but I just love it. It looks. It looks like a really comfy or uncomfy Ethan Allen couch. It's giving couch you know, the material. I just think she looks so good. I, I like, I like it. It's just weird enough for me. It's not too weird. It makes sense. And plus for the movie movie she's nominated for, even though I haven't seen it just from the previews, it makes sense. Okay. Hi, Chibi. Hi. Um, Lucy says, I can't explain why, but Emma's look reminds me of those fancy gold swan bathroom faucets. <gasps> I could see that. Lucy. I can kind of see that. That could be why I like it too, because um, I love a bath. Uh, short, long, both, both. I think she can do both here. It is a little long on the bottom. I think if it would have been a little more difficult for her to walk, aesthetically, it would have been a little more pleasing. Um, oh, April's saying, oh, poor things had more sex scenes in it than I expected, but it was really good. Oh, gratuitous sex. We will be watching that. Black Al says, um, it, uh, it's giving, or giving, I made that dress with toilet tissue for my Barbie when I was younger. That could be why I like it too. That could be why I like it too. It's just weird enough for this Aquarius mind of mine. Okay. Oh, Bradley Cooper. Why is his mother a tiny person? What? How tall is he? Nine feet? Who is this little? Is that his mother? Best actor, Bradley Cooper. Kept it classic with Louis Vuitton. Okay. Alongside with his mother, Glor Gloria is like a poly. Oh, my God. It, how tall is? I got to look this up. Is his? Oh, my God. How tall is? How tall is Bradley? Because I always thought he was just like maybe six feet. Cooper. Okay. He's 6'1". How tall is his mom? I have Oh, my God. There's another picture. This one is even crazier. Okay. She's adorable, but she's tiny. She's like, oh, my God. Little people, big Oscars. She is so yiddo. She's so petite. She definitely is shopping in the petite section. I love her big glasses. Haircut on point. Dress with jacket. Love it. I would put Nana in this outfit and Nana would kill it. Kill it. But damn. I don't know feet, but I think she's under five. She's under five feet. She's a tanker bell. Well, I've heard Bradley Cooper is dating Gigi Hadid. Um, Bradley, that's, well, let's look. How old is Bradley Cooper? How old is Bradley Cooper? Oh, he's only 49? No offense, all offense, Bradley. You look great. Um, okay. How old is Gigi Hadid? How old is Gigi? 28. Oh, that's over 20 years. Nope. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it for Leo. I don't like it for you. Mm-hmm. What have we heard besides uh 
Oh, I always thought he was going to get with Lady Gaga. I'd never even saw that movie because people like when they sing at me that much, I get offended um, in a movie. I'm just like, it's too much. And then I had a neighbor who was always getting drunk in our West Hollywood apartment um, next door. And she would be singing that one song they sang together and she ruined it. And I was like, ew, gross. Um, but yeah, mm. I don't know, but they were together. In it. it was the Barbara Streisand remake movie. And I watched the original one with Barbara Streisand. And oh my God, back in the day, people had way more patience. They have ruined us. Because I'm sure it is considered probably a cinematic masterpiece, beautiful Streisand singing. And I was like, too much singing. Too much. It was just, and they would play the whole concert. The whole, not just clips. Now with the Instagram, TikTok, YouTube shorts, um, culture. I was like, I have to sit through the whole song in the movie. Granted, I did sit through the Eras tour and I loved it. So I don't know. I didn't hear him sing. Oh, A Star is Born. Thank you, Cammie. Thank you. Thank you, Graphics. Um, yeah, the original one, I was like, that is a lot of singing. That's a lot. Um, HC says, I just counter their singing with the bad version just so they know how it feels to listen to them. <laughs> Thank you, Audrey. If you can be their parent, grandparent, it's a hard no, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. No. Mm. Right without the, no, take the singing out. Okay, this is an Aladdin. One jump ahead of the bad guys. Now that was... A uh, song that a uh, movie that had great singing, but I can't get over how little his mother is. Okay. Oh, this is a gorgeous little uh, look we have going on here. Ava uh, wore a baby blue custom Louis Vuitton with buckled straps over the shoulders. The filmmaker accessorized with Reza jewelry and a red pin um, signaling support for a ceasefire. Okay. So this is what the red pins that people have is for a ceasefire in the Israeli Hamas war. Okay. Duvernay. Okay. Ava. Ava. Ava, I like the, now, yes, I like the little belt straps. It just does something. Makeup, gorgeous. Everything. The color's a little muted. And I feel like it could be a little brighter, but I do like the cut of the dress. But I wish it was a different color. I wish it was a different color. And HC says, that's a gorgeous color. I get that it's like, pastel -y baby blue, but I, I wish it popped a little bit. And I do think maybe the makeup, they could have done a little more with the makeup for the dress. The makeup is gorgeous, but more for like a nude tone dress or something. Mm -hmm. Straps could be thinner. Mm, good point. And then I think, what if we just took the straps off? That would be very, so the straps take away anything that's elegant. I like the straps because they're pretty badass. But if you take them away, that becomes more elegant. Mm -hmm. And less Tomb Raider. But I do like a little Tomb Raider. I like the clutch. Okay. I like that it looks like it could double as a weapon if I needed to hit somebody. Mm -hmm. The hair down and flowy. I think I would like, yeah, maybe like a half up. I do like it up, though. I think it looks very beautiful. And if the straps weren't there, and if you just had like a bare shoulder, the hair up, very nice. Very nice. And then, oh, okay. What do we have going on here? Okay. Um, set to perform Oscar-nominated song, The Fire Inside, Becky G. Who is Becky G? Arrived in Vera Wang gown with a mid-thigh slit. That is not mid-thigh. That is a coochie cutter slit. And cascading train. The singer completed the look with opera style. Oh, is she an opera singer? Fingerless gloves. Mm, I mean, I have a, I do own fingerless gloves. The bodice is almost like nakey. Nakey, nakey. Wakey, wakey. Mm -hmm. So it's a little, it's a little nakey. Again, it kind of, I like the bodice because it's like, it's very sparkly pop, pop singery, <clears throat> but with the skirt and the gloves, no, right? No, they could have just made it like a black bodice or some kind of with jewels or I don't know, but no, no. Again, very Charlotte Tilbury, uh, 
pillow talk on the lips. But yeah, no, the skirt's cute. I like it. Fingerless glove, why not? But the bodice, mm, the corset top. Yes, the corset top could have been better. Rodolfo says something off of a Victoria's Secret floor. Yes, I know Victoria's Secret. Oh, Jennifer, no. Why did they do that to her? Why would they do that to her? This is not a brunch at the Beverly Hilton. This is the Oscars. A polka dot. A polka dot. They polka dotted her? Oh, Jennifer Lawrence is gorgeous. Makeup, great. Hair, sure. This is... No. No, Betty Boop, no. Mm -mm. Oh. It's brunchy, Rachel. It's brunchy. It's Jennifer Lawrence, Otter. Yeah. It's a it's picnicky. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence, fantastic lover. But why'd they do this to her? Why'd they do this to you, Jen? Who'd you piss off? Who'd you make mad? Who'd you call out? What in the Cat Williams did you say? Were you calling out the liars in Hollywood? Did were you spreading around? That that gossip that Matt Reif asked some executive D for the fame. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. And I, I, I hate to seem like a petty individual for picking apart lies. But Jesse Smollett going to keep lying until you say we don't believe you. Like it's important. All people that love the truth got to be happy if the truth coming out and lies is getting exposed. That's just what time it is. 2024, folks. It's 2024 and we have to be honest. This is this is not a good look. But did you guys hear that rumor? Some comedian I've never heard of, no offense, all offense, I haven't heard of a lot of people, nor do I want to. He said that he was about to hit it, like, not like hit it, like hit it and quit it, but hit it Hollywood style on the upward trajectory of fame with Matt Reif. And they went to a meeting together. It's very Illuminati. And um, two male executives were there and they were like, we're going to give you all of this. But first, you got to S this D. Mine and his, him and his friends, the Harvey Weinstein. And this dude, allegedly, the guy telling the story, walked out. He said, I and S and no D. And that's why we've never heard of him. But he said, stand-up comedian Matt Reif, who, young comedian, started on Wild and Out, I think, years ago, then took off on TikTok for his crowd work. Then we realized, the women were like, we like him. And then they realized, oh, he doesn't really want a woman audience. <laughs> he tells these jokes that are, you know, borderline misogynistic, which he has the right to do. Um, and then now he's like, I want the guys to be fans of me. And we're like, okay, Matt, whatever. So this man said Matt Reif stayed and was like, one for you and one for you and one for you and one for you. Um, I don't believe it. This guy seemed weird. And he's about to get sued for defamation because Matt Reif was like, um, hello. Yes. What is your name? Let me look you up. Let me tell my lawyers. I don't think Matt Reif had to SD to get famous. I think Matt Reif is uh, who they make famous. That's, he's got that look of who they make famous, you know? And yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. And if he did, I don't know. I don't know. But um, witness says, I could see this dress at a fancy yacht party. Oh, okay. Yes. Yes, witness. Mm-hmm. You can't have it both ways, Jennifer Rower says. <laughs> she looks pretty, and the dress is, think, is pretty. It's just not fancy enough for the occasion. No. No. Yeah, we have to expose the lies in 2024. No dots on the ground. It's not a gown if it has dots. It's a dress. It could be a cute dress, but it's it's not a gown. Okay. Oh. 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 Oh, to the floor. We have feathers. To the floor, Lupita. Oh my God, Lupita. Wasn't Lupita, is Lupita married? No, to Joshua Jackson? No, Lupita. Lupita, Joshua Jackson. Did I see that they were together? Yeah, oh, they oh they attended the Oscars to <laughs> Jolene. You do know what you're talking about occasionally. <gasps> Wait, that's not Joshua Jackson. Oh, with Joseph Quinn after Joshua Jackson PDA. Oh, 
Okay, so she went, Lupita went to the Oscars with Joseph Quinn, whoever that is. Looks like Mark Zuckerberg, just a little, no offense, all offense. After PDA with Joshua Jackson, who we all know from, obviously, the Mighty Ducks, okay? Uh, Charlie from the Mighty Ducks, I think he was on Dawson's Creek. Yes, Pacey on Dawson's Creek. Um, so she had a different special guy by her side. The Oscar winner, who was presenting at the Academy Awards on Sunday inside the Dolby Theater in Los Angeles, stepped out onto the red carpet, not with her new man, Joshua Jackson, but with her A Quiet Place, day one. A Quiet Place? They're still making Quiet Places? Oh, because probably all the other people died. Um, Co-star, Joseph Quinn. Okay, Joseph Quinn, I don't know you. I'm sure you're great. But Lupita, Lupita. I, th I love this look. I love that they put glitter on her like it's 1996. I love it so much. Oh, Jay says, I like the color, not the style. I like the style too. I like a little feather and then feather to the floor. To the feather, to the floor. I love it. Everything. Beautiful. Makeup. Beautiful. Lips. Gorgeous. Red. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lupita's dress. It's It really is perfect. Her arms. Talk about arms. We were talking about Carrie's arms, but these are the arms that I dream about at night that I'll never have because I it sucks lifting things. It's so hard. Um, oh, the comedian immortal is saying it was satire about Matt Ray. Hilarious. Hilarious sat satire to accuse someone of S and D's. Oh my gosh. Chicken head. Thank you so much for the super chat. It says I could get, uh, the dress at a brunch. Yes. You could understand if the dress was at a brunch. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Joseph Quinn was in season four of strange. He was, which one was he? Christopher. Who was he in Stranger Things? What happened season four? What season are we on? I know I'm waiting for the last season to happen. Coming this summer, I think. But who was he in Stranger Things? Now I gotta look it up. Joseph Quinn, Stranger Things. Because uh, me and Lucy, my niece, we love Stranger Things. Um, who were you in Oh, yeah! He was the rock and roll guy. Oh, he was great. Oh, he's great. Good for you. Oh, but it's just her co-star. But good for you if you guys hook up. He's English. Okay. He's best known for his role as Eddie Munson in the fourth season of the Netflix Stranger Things. He was great in Stranger Things. That was a fun character. Just without the hair, I, I did not recognize him one bit because he has short hair at the Oscars. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about, the picture of them two together, um, which is a darling picture as my – as every grandmother would say. All right, so let's pull it up here. Let me stop sharing on this one. Okay. Oh, now it all makes sense. It's all coming back, all coming back to me now. Okay. No, that's not him. That's a picture of Jane Polly. Yes, I have a picture of Jane Polly on my desktop. Um, that's just how I roll. All right. Let's see, where did you go? Oh, here we are. Okay. Oh, yes. I mean, it's mostly Lupita in this picture, but I'll show you guys. Now, you tell me if this looks like Eddie Munson. Okay, this don't look like Eddie Munster with that, without his long hair and his jean jacket and him like rocking out. Okay, here we go. So this is who she was seen with on the red carpet. Cute. They look cute. But this doesn't look like the Stranger Things guy. So I'm so impressed that you guys um, knew that this was Stranger Things Eddie. Because I did not. So good. Yes, HC. Joshua Jackson will always be a mighty duck to me. He'll always be Charlie. Mm -hmm. This is who will be. And when the roosters are crowing and the ducks are turning circles in the pasture, ducks fly together. They really do. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's also Pacey. I mean, he's Dawson's Creek Pacey. Um, okay. Back to it, Jolene. Let's see who else. I want to I wanna see the worst dress, though. Oh, I love a worst dress. Okay, Lupita, come back to me. Come back. And she's back. Lupita killed it. Oh, it's uh, Office Jim and Emily Blunt. 
Why did they give her Hanes her way on the dress? Why does she have outward underwears? I like the shininess of the dress. Her arms are killing it. I do like his white suit. But why did they put male tidy whities on the front of the dress? Why'd they do that to her? Why does she have a long crotch? Why did they long crotch her dress? He looks good. He looks a little Ozempic-y, Jim. Okay. But um, let's see who did this. Emily Blunt wore a head turning. Shia Pirelli. Is that how you say it? A gown with floating straps. She was pictured alongside husband John Krasinski in an off-white tuxedo. I like the off-white tuxedo. With the little brooch. I like, what's his name? John. It's not Jim. It's John. I like John's hair. Did John dye his hair darker? It's looking good, Jim. Looking good, Jim. But why did they put penis underwear in the front? Why does she have the longest crotch in the world? Why did they do that to her? The belt would have just been fine. Why the penile implant? Why? I just don't understand it, you guys. I'm really taken aback. Just right there, right in the baby door, right in front. Were they starting to draw like the uterus and stopped? I don't know. I don't know. It's undies. The dress is great without the weird undies thing. Yeah, it is. Um, her straps are not touching her skin. They're not. Oh, this is some Kate Middleton level Photoshop, allegedly. They're probably they're probably AI. They're probably not even real, guys. I don't think they're real. Uh oh. It's not even touching. Do her arms exist? Are they real? Probably not. I mean, what real person would put on that Hanes her way dress? Hanes his way. Interesting. Um, I will be honest, though. I like that they're not touching. I don't know how they got them to fly, but ducks fly together and the straps fly together this year at the Oscars. That's what we're looking at. Mm-hmm. Someone on Twitter said it was an Oppenheimer phenomenon of why the straps don't touch the skin. Oh, I bet that's so funny if I watched Oppenheimer and I haven't. So I ruined that joke graphics. But yes, John looks good. Yeah. Oh, a brown or white shoe. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah. It's very, oh, it's very, yes. Agreed. A very monochromatic would have been nice. The black is, yeah, it's a little like, oh, oh, yeah, I think he needs brown or white. Good catch, Melissa. Good catch. Oh, Florence and Emily were both in the movie. Oh, they were both in Oppenheimer. I gotta watch it. All right, well, I mean, other than that, good, but I can't get past the underwear. I can't get past, oh, America. I love America. I love the United States of America. Um, And America Ferreira. Oh, my God. Barbie actor America Ferreira arrives at the 96th. 96. Oh, my God. I see like there should be more. No, okay. Academy Awards wearing a pink custom Versace pink gown and bold pomelado jewelry. Oh, this is just so nice. It just is so the body like curves and with the oh, with the bob, I might cry. This is gorgeous America. She is representing America. This is this is so good, you guys. It's so good. It's so good. Um, that those straps are so flattering, halter level flattering. Oh, and the the little uppities by the boobs. Oh, I love an uppity by the boob. Just a little boop 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 boop, like a harness for your tots. Oh, so great and just it fits so well. She looks so good. She looks so good. Uh, the line is just, it's gorgeous. This this is a Barbie dress. Yes, Wanda. She looks great, Black Gal says. I see Paris. I see France. I see Ferreira's underpants. Do you see her underpants? I don't see them. Well, if she's like any of us, she's probably wearing some sponks. Some sponks. Liquid metal. Ooh, very nice. Gorgeous. April likes it. Beautiful. I think we might all kind of agree on this dress, right? A bob looks so good on her. She just looks adorable in a bob. I mean, gotta love a lady with a bob, but she rocks it. So good. 
Fits are perfectly no gapping. Mm -mm. No gapping, no gaping, no nothing. Yes. America, America, America. Do, 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 do. Uh, uh, we need to get the... I opened it to make it a little bigger. Okay, let's see if I got it. Dun, 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 dun. From sea to shining sea. Love it. It just is such a pretty look. It's so shiny. And the necklace sits so nicely. We don't need any bracelets or dangles. Very fresh face, Charlotte Tilbury. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay. I, I must move on. I can't keep obsessing about America, but so far she and Zendaya are, and um, Florence are my favorites. So cute. Oh no, Lupita. <sighs> yeah, Lupita too. So I have a couple, I have a couple favorites. Okay. We're almost through, I think, unless we are through it. Let's see. From sea to shining sea. Oh, oh, with the heart. Tats in the middle, nodding to her forthcoming appearance in the movie adaptation of Wicked. Cynthia Arrivo um, wore an emerald green leather gown by Louis Vuitton. I do love emerald green. That has got to be so sweaty, though. Oh, my God. I am sweating. This dress is pretty magnificent. Again, I don't know if you need the top thingy. I like the nails though. The rougie rougish. The rougie rougish. I think without the psh, psh, and just a very sleek leather gown. Very interesting. Okay. Oh, makeup on point. Earrings. Oh, I love a lot of earrings. But I don't know if I love the psh, psh, psh. It's, a, it's a lot. Again, I'm thinking of when you go potty. Who's going to hold that? And the leather's so sweaty. And it's probably really heavy. Yeah, witness. Uh-huh. Our Wickedest Witch. Oh, I can't. I'm going to go see. I've never even seen Wicked. I am not very Broadway play cultured. I'd like to be more. I did go to a play recently. A local play. What was the play? Chell? Yeah. What was the play we saw called? POTUS. POTUS. Which I don't know if it was ever a Broadway or an off-Broadway. It was on Broadway or off? My husband said it was on Broadway. We saw the local adaptation. Shout out to them. And uh, it was very nice. But, um, well, there were parts I didn't like. Okay, I'll be honest. It wasn't the greatest. But I, it was okay. Shout out to them. <sighs> I didn't like it. <sighs> Why am I lying? Uh, <laughs> it was okay. It was. I, I think I would like it on Broadway. You know? I think I would like it. But, um, but yeah. I did a wicked themed Halloween tree one time and I had never seen it, but I realized it's like, you know, loose or based on the wicked witch of the West, right? Wicked witch of the East, not Glenda, the other ones. Oh no, I started buffering. Apologies. Apologies. Wicked is a great show. Saw it a long time ago. Yeah. Sometimes I just want to be like very, I understand how hard it is to put into a show and like way to go. But I, I feel that there were just, when I saw this play, I was like, oh, okay. Okay. I'll just tell you guys at the end of the play, they made these ladies, these wonderful actresses <sighs> sing and dance to who runs the world girls. And it was, no one should have to do that when the play's over, you took the bow and then awkwardly to an audience of what appeared to be besides me, my husband and our friends, Vanessa and Joaquin, shout out to them, um, seemed to be 75 to 90 year old white men. And they had to, these young actresses had to go, who runs the world? Girls. And my husband made a great point saying they should have just added that into the play like somehow they're like dancing but they who run this and they each had a part they had to step forward and sing and dance and it was like <sighs> and I knew I saw the look in the women's eyes and I thought they don't want to do this because I know women and uh and all the boomer guys are like 
You're like, who runs his mother? And then one of them did like a pussy drop. And it was, it was a matinee. And there were, you know, very elderly men there. And elderly men have the right to see plays too. But they were confused. And um, not all of them. But yeah, I felt, I felt for these women. It was, yeah, Amy, it was, I felt so bad for these actresses. And I think a lot of them came all the way from Los Angeles and New York and great actresses. And they were like, who runs this mother? And a lot of them were, you know, as white as me, as old as me or older. And just like, they each had a Beyonce lyric. And I'm like, you know, on TikTok, when you're like lip singing, you're like, okay, you're lip syncing. Okay. But then you actually have to do it. It was just, yeah, it was like a really bad dance battle. It was, it was horrible. I felt so bad because the show was over. We clapped. They held hands. They bowed. Now they want to bow out. And they're like, one more time. Who runs this mother? And it was already like a very like feminist woman forward play. <clears throat> They got the point across, and now they just disproved everything, being like, no, women suck, because this is horrible. <laughs> Jodie Foster, who is the little hottie with Jodie Foster? I don't like Jodie Foster's dress. No offense, all offense, but I did just watch Chell. I have to ask him again. Did we watch True Detective North? What was it? Yeah, but what's it called? North Sky? North Country? Huh? True Detective. And what was it? North Country? I think it was True Detective North. It was on HBO Max. It was so good. We binged it. Like right before my mom and dad came to visit, we were supposed to be like, you know, cleaning up, getting their, getting the guest room ready and stuff. And we were like, let's just binge all six or whatever episodes. It was so freaking good. And Jodie Foster was amazing. But who is this lady with her? Is this her wife? Best Supporting Actress Jodie Foster pictured alongside wife. Alexandra Hedison looked graceful in a satin low gown that flowed. It looks 1997 prom dress. You love David's bridal. No offense. All offense. Um, into a shimmering floor length skirt. The actor accessorized with jewelry, kumquat or kiwat, uh, and Fred Layton. No. 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 I like the color. I do love her wife's makeup and hair and nails. Looks so good. They're a cute little couple, but no. Yes, Mother of the Bride. You know, going to my first prom. Don't want to lose my virginity. Night Country, not North Country, Jolene. Night Country. So True Detective Night Country. So good. So good. It's a trip. It's a trip. Um, but yeah, I just feel like the top of the dress, great, great, great. But then I get to this interesting bottom and it does, it's not fitting her. It's too big for her. It's a little too big. But yeah, Jodie Foster is killing it. Um, oh, and she was Best Supporting Actress nominee. Did she win? All right. Oh, this is the girl from the Menu movie, right? And also the Queen's Gambit or something. She has such an interesting look. Um, Anya Taylor Joy wowed in a Christian Dior couture. I can't see the front. It looks it looks like mermaid scales. She looks like a fish. It's cute. It's very fishy, bedazzled. Hair long, flowy. From the back, I mean, yeah, it looks like mermaid. -y. Yeah, okay, sure. But I want to see the front. What does the front look like? I'm going to have to see the front. Oh, okay. We got a little more of the bodice. Danielle Brooks arrived in a bedazzled satin dress with exposed metal boning detailing by Dolce & Gabbana. Oh, orange is the new black. Uh, why did they wrinkle it in the back? Why did they leave it wrinkly for her? I do like her shoes and toenails, even though Tom Sandoval did ruin white no toenail polish. I don't love this dress. I love her hair. I love her makeup. Oh, I love her nails. No. It's crinkly. Oh, why? Oh, Dan don't do Danielle like that. Let me see what you guys think. Because it's just... She looks good. She always looks good. But it's just... If they ironed it, yeah. 
it just throws me off because it's like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then it's like, not iron, not iron, not ironed. Why haven't they made material that they can put on that that just stays so you don't have to iron it? Because all I can focus on is that. And I don't even own an iron. And that's how bad it has to be. All right. But her hair looks so good. The front part is just very, the corset is very boobylish. Love it. But this too crinkled. Yeah, the top looks nice. Mm -hmm. It's a housewife's reunion dress. It is a little housewife's reunion, isn't it? Seneca says, I love it. The bottom and the top don't seem to go together. Danielle says, it's a great dress, but need a steam. It's all just a little steamy. And if it just like, oh, that would be nice. Because the legs, the shoes, everything. So great. So great. So talented. I do not know who this woman is. She looks like she's on traders. Who is this woman? Andrea Riseboro wore an eye-catching long-sleeved low dress with tartan print. This is Alan Cummings' sister, I think. We're just going to keep going. With What in the Lindsay Lohan circa 2007 purse is going on here? No, we can't. Oh, Billy Eyelash. Now, this is a very Trader's Alan Cummings, but so cute. Oh, I lied. I thought her socks had the thingy things. I like it. I like it for Billy Eyelash. Billy Eilish. I love the little uh, purse. Mm -hmm. Okay, Billy Eilish. Nominated for Best Original Song, arrived at the ceremony in Chanel. I used to fall. I think for like her style, her age, all that. That's totally Billy Eilish. Yeah, it works for her because she's Billie Eilish. Anyone else wearing this, you'd be like, no. But her song in the Barbie movie, I could cry right now just thinking about it. Oh, my God, I don't have any of my lip stuff here. Whatever will I do? Oh, Billy. Now I'm just something. <laughs> oh, such a good song. I just ruined it. Oh, what is going on here? Okay. Okay, Haley Stein Steinfeld. Not to be confused with Haley Seinfeld. Looked a dream in an Ellie Saab couture gown featuring golden floral embellishments on the bust and the wreath and a trailing floor length neck sash. There are parts I like, but I feel like the, the front part needs to go up a little more. It looks like it's dragging down her tots, like her tots are going to escape. Okay. Oh, it's this cutie patootie. He was in everyone, everywhere, everything, every right now. Um, and also the Goonies and also Indiana Jones. Um, oh, he wore a double-breasted, deep red Giorgio Armani suit. He looks good. He looks very handsome. I love the glasses with the tint. So good. So good. Come back, kid. Oh, these two. People were very mad because it looks like Kirsten Dunst and her husband. I always forget his name that he lost a lot of weight because he, they met on Fargo and he started as like a very skinny actor and then had put a little bit of weight on him. And um, I mean, he looked good. And now it's very Ozempic, but um, I think they're a cute couple. Has Jesse Plemons. Yes. We were first introduced to him while I was in Mad Men and then he's done lots of stuff and he's a very good actor. He can be creepy. He can be lovable. He can be lovably creepy. Uh, so she wore a Gucci dress with a sharp edge neckline with a sleek floor length silhouette. The actor completed the look with Fred Layton jewelry. Okay, they didn't even tell us what he wore. They were like, we don't give a fuck what Jesse wore. Um, I like Kirsten Dunst's look, but it is very bright and groom. But I like it. I think they look cute. His hair looks really nice. <gasps> Oh, oh my gosh. The Oh, and a flare. Oh, Coleman Domingo, best actor nominee, wore a black Louis Vuitton double-breasted suit with statement bow tie and jewelry by David Yerman. I wanted to just shine like a diamond, he told Laverne Cox during E's red carpet coverage. I feel like this... Mm, it's very... Mm, it's like a little Lenny Kravitzy. But I do love a flare leg with the boots. The jacket is an interesting fit, but what do I know? Uh, uh, 
it's given a little bit of like older lady coat. Mm, I like the jewelry. I like the flare. Okay. Mm. Mm. Oh, is that what is that what double breasted is? <gasps> mariachi band. He could be. He could do mariachi. I do like some mariachi. Okay. I. This is. It's been the over an hour of talking about the fashions, you guys. Yeah, Captain of the Ship. I I didn't love it. The bow tie's cute. The pants are okay. Because the cowboy boot and stuff, but the jacket, there's just something. Yeah, contrasting buttons, sea captain, 70s pants, <laughs> that sailor jacket. Very nautical. Maybe he's on going on below deck. Not that he would go on below deck, but one never knows. One never knows, you guys. So um, we got through the fashions. We didn't see the worst because I think we saw some that were bad. And we saw some that were good. And we saw some that we hope to never see again. Um, and that's kind of how it works. Okay. So let's talk about, oh my gosh. You guys, talk, here is one of the worst fashions I have ever seen. Um Okay, let me just grab this here, and we will talk about it. Uh, it's going to be a long one. I thought, oh, my God, I'm just, I'm always like, I'm just going to go live for an hour. I'm just going to do an hour. And then it just turns into two because I am a wordy bitch. All right. Okay, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. All right. The reunion. We've had parts one. We've had parts two. What is Dorit doing? What is happening with Dorit? Why? Just like how they did Sandra dirty with the traders at the reunion. They did the little spiral thingy. Why did they do this to Dorit? Okay. And this took her allegedly so much time that she was like two hours late to the reunion. She says, oh, no, I wasn't two hours late. I wasn't. And everyone else was like, yeah, you were. We had to sit and wait for you. And people did not appreciate it, allegedly. I don't know why they put that one strand of hair, one little sweaty piece right on her forehead. It was just so wrong. So, so wrong. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand it at all. But that's what they did. But that's exactly what they did. They did that. Kyle, okay. Kind of boring. Erica, yeah. <sighs> Most parts one and two of the reunion is mostly uh, Dorit just getting roasted up for being a Karen. Garcelle just being like, I don't like you. Uh, Crystal saying, I don't like you. I mean, you said this, you called me a child bride. And Dorit just refusing to accept that the things she says are problematic. And she just like, learn from it, girl. And she's not. And Garcelle hates her. Like she hates her. Her and Garcelle are not gonna be friends. Garcelle is so over Dorit and Dorit's like, what did I do to you personally? And then her and Kyle are in. Kyle was basically like, Dorit, I know you think we're besties for the resties, but guess what? We're not. I don't really like you like that. I barely talk to you. You're not into fitness, country singing lesbians, hiking, lifting lots of weight, divorcing Mauricio. You're not into any of the things I'm into right now. So we don't really talk. And she's still mad over the Kathy Hilton of it all. So Kathy Hilton, last season, or was it last season? Seems like a million seasons ago. Um, where Dorit, Kyle felt like Dorit had Kathy's back. And Dorit's like, I have a separate relationship with her than I do you. And Kyle's like, you're not really even friends with her. Um, Erica talked about how she went to see the victims of Girardi and Girardi Keys from uh, after the <laughs> her counsel recommended she do it, her lawyers. And Andy's like, well, why did you go? Honey, <laughs> I wanted them to see that a different side of me, <laughs> not like, you know, just what uh, they see on television. He's like, okay, but can you tell me more? <laughs> I can't. You can't tell me in more detail why you went to see the victims. <laughs> I can't because I can't <laughs> and I won't <laughs> and I don't give a fuck. So that was really nice. Um, apparently 
what's her name? Anna Marie, the new housewife this season, has a whole storyline of like her mother was sick and she unfortunately passed away and some other things that Bravo just didn't show us. And Anne Marie is writing for Dorit and Dorit's um, problematic nature. And then Garcelle is writing for Sutton as Anna Marie calls Sutton out for being problematic. It's just like, these ladies are a mess. And they're all accusing each other of being alcoholics. And Sutton's like, you accuse me of being an alcoholic. And Dorit's like, well, I don't know if you're an alcoholic. And Sutton says, well, I don't know if you're an alcoholic. Carcass out. Because, you know, Dorit would always be like, a vodka soda or whatever she had. Um, three lemons squeezed. Carcass out. How annoying can you be to say carcass out? Where are my bartenders at? I'm sure that's a thing, but that's not like a thing. You can just say just lemon squeezed but not dropped in the glass. Carcass out. I'll have 76 lemons squeezed in my vodka soda. Caucus out. <laughs> oh, my God. Lucy says, Dorit notoriously copies black influencers. Very interesting, considering she doesn't want to educate herself in the least about her privilege and problematic behavior, like, at all. She just refused. She's like, I did not know that was problematic. And now Anna Marie is coming for Sutton, because Sutton allegedly said that Anna Marie, on Watch What Happens Live, I think Sutton said Anna Marie was, um, aggressive aggressively attacking her small esophagus and so Anna Marie's like well Garcelle where are you at there is this this white lady saying you're aggressively attacking and I think people came back at Anna Marie and they were like but that is actually you aggressively attacking <laughs> so it was like it was crazy uh I know Anna Marie it was like uh, in the reunion I think we learned that Crystal has a hundred million dollar. Does she have like a water business or something? And she was, you know, they were asking her about money. And she and Anna Marie said, I was raised like I, we just don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. I have some very, 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 very rich friends and very, 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 very famous friends. I don't talk about it. I'm like, except for when you do talk about it, because you're on a television show called Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which is about rich people and showing their lives. So don't tell me you don't talk about it when you're on a show that glorifies it and talks about it. <laughs> Anna Marie is a mess. And then she wants to, she's being bullied by the fans. Ugh, girl, you came in literally going after Sutton's esophagus. That's boring. It was boring. I don't care if Sutton has a small esophagus. I don't care if she keeps talking about her small esophagus. I don't want to hear about it. I feel like Anna Marie going after Sutton's small esophagus. Now we got to hear about her esophageal issues forever. Kyle did make a point where I was like, get it, Kyle. Kyle said to um, Sutton when they said, Kyle, you don't share anything about your life. She's like, ah, Sutton, I'm sorry, I shared. My kids have grown up. I'm going through a divorce. I had both of my sisters and problems on with their relationships on the show. I've been here for like 13 years. And you, Sutton, what did you have? Uh, what did she say? A horse and a small esophagus or something. And Sutton's like, oh. <gasps> or and uh, went on dates. And I'm like, that's kind of true. We were starting to learn more about Sutton and her marriage, um, uh, her ex-husband now to that super rich guy uh, that she was with since she was really young. And I would like to learn more about that. I did like the moments when Sutton did open up about that, but it seems like Sutton is going to do her best to kind of protect him because he's not on the show and also protect that money. Cause allegedly she gets $300,000 in alimony a month. What do you even do with that? much money. Plus she got a baseball team out of it or a couple baseball teams, maybe minor league. I'm not sure. She got boats and hoes and cars and all kinds of stuff. Um, and yeah, so I understand. <laughs> I mean, it sucks that we can't learn more about that, but it currently is not her husband. So I guess that makes sense. And also she doesn't want to ruin that bag. Oh yeah. She buys a horse with it. Mm-hmm. Lala says, I watch Anne Marie and think she's going to hulk on all of them. She's trying so hard to speak softly. Um, 
that would actually make it more interesting if she just like did anything other than talk about esophagus esophagus is and also um being a nurse anesthesi anesthesiologist anesthesist whatever which is a fantastic job and amazing but crystal said you pretended to be a doctor of anesthesiology not a nurse not a nurse boats and she got boats and hose anna says kyle has always shared what she's wanted to share 100 percent right anna sutton's ex pre prevented her from having her younger kid on the show yeah i think there's it's probably he's probably very protected them because at the level he's at you know that dude's got skeletons in his closet and that could wow <sighs> yeah i'm surprised that she even went on a show like this knowing that you okay bud my dogs are sleeping by me and they're having bad dreams oh my god he just did this <laughs> little teddy he's barking at people in his dreams that's so sweet do you guys hear him his head's on the rug he's like <laughs> so cute oh he's running his paws are doing this Oh, I wonder where he's running to. Hopefully home. Don't run away. Not even in your dreams. Um, Lucy said, I get the feeling that all the rumors about Anna Marie's husband and SA tanked her goodwill with the network. Of course. And they torpedoed her storyline and gave her bad at it. Ah, Lucy, you're smart. Yeah, because I'm sure they wanted a reason to not have her back. But they should have done their due diligence and found this shit out. Because if you read, which we did during A Real Housewives of Beverly Hills recap, the allegations against her husband and the essay it's gross and how he's handled it and how Anna Marie's handled it disgusting I don't ever want to see her again or her dumb husband HC says I appreciate Crystal speaking up but wish she would have admitted that Kyle insinuated Sutton was no call Kyle 100% insinuated that Sutton was no alcoholic and uh anorexic she did which is that's Kyle's problem is she doesn't own that shit. And then she wants us to feel bad when it happens to her. So she calls out other people's marriages, other people's relationships, other people's losses. And then it happens to her. And she's like, ah, and you're like, but you've been very insensitive to other people dealing with it. So when she talks about on previous seasons, her own issues with food and stuff, and then so casually brings it up about Sutton, it comes off really gross, really gross. Um, Kara says, I only watched a few episodes this year used to be way better back in the day. I mean, they just, at this point, watching Erica Jane on it is pretty painful. Speaking of which, um, bet it all on Blonde. Uh, Erica Jane got a spinoff, but it's like a two-episode special, if you will. Uh, and it's like her comeback uh, in Vegas and getting her little Vegas residency. So Bravo did this two episodes. It's her and Mikey and her backup dancers and a little bit of you know tom and what's going on there and so uh it was basically it's like erica jane's kind of redemption to her and her you know being a part of these lawsuits and the tom girardi girardi keese ripping off their clients um that trusted them that got huge settlements because they were hurt or some of the people killed so there he represented the, the families whether in a plane accident with boeing or uh with corporations they worked for explosions things like that and now we know what we know is that tom girardi has over 200 complaints to the bar against him that were overlooked because he bought and paid for the investigators within the bar a lot of the people within the lapd a lot of the other judges people that would regulate and should be looking out for um us the people were bought and paid for by him so he never had any consequences for his actions of stealing the money from his clients um which did predate his relationship with erica jane but happened all during their 25 plus year marriage and a lot of questions came into play of how much did erica know how much of what erica had was these people's money and then the whole earring fiasco and just how she acted just gross so now she got this residency in vegas and she's gonna do all of her hits you know it's expensive to be mad and i will say it was entertaining i hated that i was entertained by it but it's it's done very well um 
you know, obviously the filming, the cinematography or the the documentary style, I really enjoy that. But it's so hard to feel bad for this woman. It's impossible for me to feel bad for her that she can't live her pop star dreams in her 50s when there are people out there that her husband stole from and that she's shown little empathy for and wants to keep these earrings that were allegedly purchased with the blood money of, you know, these clients. And it's hard for me to feel bad for her and root for her to get this pop career going when there are literal victims out there who saw no money or it took years and years to see money or people who were hurt and burned victims and things. It's I'm like, oh, you can't be a pop star in your 50s or you might not make it. You know, it was giving MTV made a little bit. And it's just her and Mikey, her friend who she's been working with forever because, you know, she did have some other friends she was working with in the costumes and she allegedly screwed them over and they're suing her. And she accused them of stealing $800,000 from her, got the Secret Service involved because Tom and her are friends with the head of the Secret Surf uh, Service. And then the turn or whatever, ultimately when it was going to go to trial um, or when they were figuring out the evidence, they were like, oh, the Secret Service screwed up on the evidence. We don't have enough evidence or something. So it it appeared. And if you watch the documentary and if you need a full breakdown of the uh, house, Hustler and the Housewife on Hulu part two, um, I'll link it at the end of this video or you can uh, check, look for it. It's a couple videos back where I watched that and talk about it. And it appeared as though she was trying to hustle her friends and throw them under the bus. And the one guy, the one designer guy, uh, it ruined a lot of his life, uh, what she did with these false allegations. So it's very difficult to watch her have to, you know, cry about, will I ever get my my pop career back it's like well first of all girl i didn't know it ever existed it's like housewife songs like luann de la Sips level you know calm down and yes like lorette says can you imagine the victims watching her sing it's expensive to be me it just that alter ego she was having a hard time during the documentary of on bedded on blonde of tapping into the erica jane the saucy, seductress, singer, pop star who money isn't an object. She was like, I just don't know why. <laughs> Honey, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time tapping into this. The sexual, rich money is no issue thing. It's because that's not true. We found that that's a farce. Your money came from the victims of your husband. So, you're. I mean, this kind of... This alter ego you had, I think, needs to progress or be updated because you don't have it like that. And we've seen you don't have it like that. And also, it's just it's in poor taste when you have people out there who suffered so much loss and hurt and pain because of your husband and possibly your involvement in, you know, where the money went. Certain money went to her account. What she actually knew is just not a good look then to be out there and be like, it's expensive to be mine. Maybe you should start singing like jewel songs. You know what I mean? Like you were meant for me and I was meant to give back the earrings. Yeah. I'm really sorry to the victims that I was such a bitch. Uh, 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 uh. You know, something a little different. Maybe folk singing because you're broke now. So you got to sing poor people songs or sad, sad songs. You can't be up there like opulence. You don't have it like that. You had to get like $750,000 allegedly from this lawyer friend, the only friend you kept from you and Tom's relationship. He had to front you the money. And then she tried to get a loan to spend extra money on this tour, on this, not tour, on this residency in Vegas. And they denied her. And she was like, <laughs> I'm like, you didn't get it. It's like, no shit, you didn't get it. Who is going to give you a loan now? You don't have the same connections. You've proven to be, you know, in this like, a part of this like huge fraudulent activity, um, but whether you were fully aware or not, like what, huh? Welcome to the real world. They're gonna just give you a hundred G's because <laughs> honey, I want another guitar at my show. I want a couple more keyboarders. No, no. What are you doing with the housewives money? Because the people that hired her for the, the residency gave her a budget and she was like, <laughs> honey, I need more. I need more. So mostly Mikey, it's her and her friend Mikey 
and they're practicing and she can't focus because of all this Tom Girardi things going on. And Mikey just crying, her friend, who's like her choreographer, director of her show. I think he worked with the Pussycat Dolls or show back in the day. And he's just like, <laughs> I don't think she's going to get it because she can't get sexy enough on the bed. She's like, <laughs> honey, isn't this good? It's only rehearsal, Mike. And he's like, <laughs> I just, we're going to have to cut the number on the bed where she pretends to masturbate. It's like, it's so, <laughs> it's cringy laughable. It was very entertaining. But when you actually like remember what they're doing, like you are pretending to have sex with yourself or someone else on a bed. And this Mikey is taking it very seriously. He's like, <laughs> I just don't know. If we're going to get there, I don't know if she's going to be able to make the right orgasm face. And I'm like, oh, my God. And she's like, <laughs> I'm like, I need a coffee and I talk to my mom. And then we meet. And we've met her on the house I support, but we see her stage mom. And her mom's like, you're tired. She's like, I know. Right? Yeah. And so her and her mom and Mikey's like, she's just not practicing. She's just, uh. And then her manager's there and her manager's like, cut the cameras. Cut the cameras. Cut the mics, girl. This is a documentary. This is how your client's making money. We're not cutting the cameras. I felt so bad for um, the people working on the show, on the Bravo show, because the manager's like, we need special time to talk about what? How she's not orgasming proper <laughs> properly on your round bed, fake orgasming on your round bed for the show. So there's just a lot of Mikey crying. And Erica's like, <laughs> I've never seen Mikey like this before. <laughs> Honey, what's the big deal? I turn it on when the cameras start. When the show starts. So then it's at like the House of Blues, which awesome, but calm down. And um, she comes out and she finally gets it and they have their show and everyone's crying. Well, you did so good. And Erica's like, it's crazy to think that <laughs> these people, honey, they feel bad for me. <laughs> I didn't think anyone felt bad for me. <laughs> honey. <sighs> it's like, what, do you, what are you going to do with this, Erica? I think she, with Luann, I know Luann from Roni is, um, she can be Delulu, but I feel like she gets now. It's like a cabaret. It's a show. It's silly. You're touring, whatever. It's based on the housewives. Erica really thinks she's got it, got it. She was like, I've been training. She will, you know, like at the ballet or something like she's Sutton and Merce in the purse. And she was like, I've wanted this my whole life, honey. <laughs> I wanted it. I wanted it. I've been working so hard. I deserve it. Okay. 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 And Mikey was just like, normally she can turn it on and she can pretend to masturbate and dance around and show her asshole so much better. But now she's just not showing her asshole like she used to show her asshole. I miss the way she just so... That was, there was a part with her manager and he, I think it was her manager and him or maybe her like, not assistant, but one of the choreographers um, where he was, they were playing a video of Erica's, like a music video. And Mikey was like, this was all improv. This was all improv. And it's just her putting her butt in the air and spreading her legs. I was like, I improv that all the time. That's called marriage. I don't, I don't understand how, what did she do that was so magic? She... She was in bed and like, uh, you know, like we, we all have, we all do that. She acted sexy. I, okay. What? You know, sometimes the hat comes off and I too, I'm like, mm, it's expensive to be, you know, but it was, it was like, it's improv. I was like, oh, just presenting her asshole was improv. Um, okay. Okay. They took themselves way too seriously, which made it so entertaining. Oh, uh, watching Mikey cry, no offense, all offense, was it was so entertaining. Watching Erica be like, I think something's going on. <laughs> Honey, what's going on, backup dancers? I think they're talking about me. <laughs> I'm going through a lot. <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> <sighs> and then she's just, they're like, take her upstairs and get her to get that sluttiness back. Get her to get that sexual back. I need her on the bed. I need her flipping her hair the right way. I need her going pat the puss, pat the puss up the front, but don't wipe back to front because she'll get a UTI and an infection. I need you. And then that's... Uh, yeah. 
so um, it was a comedy. I don't think they made it to be a comedy, but it was hilarious. And there was a sad part. It was a dramedy because her dog, oh, my favorite character in the whole show was her dog, Tiago, I think his name was, who was um, dealing with, you know, being an older dog, a senior dog. And he actually passed away a month after she started, I think, her residency. And he couldn't barely walk. And they had to put these boots on him. So I don't know what his condition was. But that part, I that humanized her for me. And I was like, ah. but then I was like, stay home with your fucking dog. Um, cause I want to know who is taking care of the dog when you're not there. Why is the dog in a small little kennel within the house? Maybe he has accents. I don't know. But as a dog owner, I, I don't know. It just broke my heart. And I'm like, what is going on? And she was like, <laughs> Tom, let me have this dog, but he didn't like dogs. <laughs> Honey, because he used to be a dog. Uh, no, he wasn't a dog. <laughs> he is a dog. But no, I don't want to put dogs down. Um, but he was a paper boy back in 1922 and a dog bit him. She even had an old ass story about her, not even now ex-husband Tom, because they're technically still married. And how he didn't like dogs because he was a paper boy. I'm like, what in the greatest generation, super depression, the Great Depression history is this that you're telling me? Tom Girardi, you were a paper boy 900 years ago. But apparently the trauma didn't want him to have a dog. And then Erica finally got this dog. She was like, honey, I need protection. I need a friend. And this dog was there for her because that's what dogs are. They don't care if you're a shitty person. They will love you. They will love you. And, um, you know, if everyone else hates you, the dog's there to love you. It wants to be loved. It wants your love. And so this dog was there for her when she was going through all this stuff. And then... To see him in such pain, <sighs> right? I feel like they exploited a little bit the dog situation because I'm like, I, if I was thinking, what is, why are they putting the dog through this? He legit couldn't walk or get up. And then they put these booties on him and then he could walk a little, but he was falling. So I don't know what his condition was, but it was a comedy except for the dog part. Ugh. Yes, hit the like, but I also like to give a rose in <laughs> heart if that's okay too. I love that, mortal. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it was 1937, tough times for sure. When Tom was a paper boy getting bit by dogs. I don't think enough dogs bit him. I bet he lied about that too. Because if he was really bit by the dogs, maybe he would have been a better person. Maybe he wouldn't be such an asshole. People that don't like dogs are sus. Hella sus. Ah. <sighs> So yeah, it was, it was hilarious. I'm, I want to do like a separate, I'm probably going to do it on my TikTok or reels. I want to kind of act out <laughs> just in like a, a two minute segment, if I can, the different, the major scenes of how I interpreted Erica and Mikey and the whole documentary as a whole. So hopefully I'll feel motivated to get that done. So, so follow me on TikTok if you're not in uh, Instagram, I'll probably put it there. Maybe a YouTube short, maybe a shorter YouTube video. I'm not sure. But yeah. Oh, you guys, we're almost at two hours. Um, the last thing I want to show you is the, do I have this? The dresses of the traitors folks. The traitors folks are hanging out. Uh, Sandra or Sandra and um Peter, Peter Pals, and Janelle went to the Oscars together. They're the only Traders people I saw that went to the Oscars, but maybe I missed a couple. But these are their these are their looks. And um, Janelle was, I mean, they all were very excited to get to to get to go to the Oscars to get a ticket. That would be fun. I would love to go. I'd love to go and be in the audience, you know. Uh <laughs> Honey. So Janelle's dress, I loved it. I thought it was great. Very, I mean, very Phaedra inspired, very Barbie-esque. Um, I loved it. And obviously my expectations are lower for the reality stars. Here's the three of them together. Peter Pals looked nice. He did the no socks, similar to Dan, but he didn't have the capri pants, which was nice. I thought Sandra, she looked gorgeous. Now, would she have benefited from a more gown? dress yes but they're reality stars so they get a pass i feel like um but sandra looked gorgeous and janelle again going i'm a barbie girl in a barbie i really like her dress i really 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 like it i think it's just timeless it's classic 
And here are the three of them kind of getting ready. And Sandra with their cute little braces. Like, okay, guys, where are we going? This is Emmys? Emmys? Oh, no. Okay, I think they're going to have tweets. I think they're going to have tweets. Uh, I love Sandra. Sounds like, Pete, don't pull no sit on me. Don't pull. Queen says queen, okay? Janelle, you call me bits this time? We'll see what happens. Don't call me no bits, okay? We're, we're getting along. Let's have a good time. Let's have a good time, guys. Okay? Queen says queen. Queen says queen. You guys tried to play the game, but I did better. Okay? I don't know why she has the twied, but queen says queen. So she looked, they all looked great. Looked like they had a fun time. I will say, Pete, whoever is putting so much under eye concealer on you, tell them to stop. You don't need it, sir. You're still young. We don't need a white out underneath your eyes. Okay. That's for my age group. And even me, I got to be careful because now the makeup sinks in to the lines after 40. So they got a whole after 40 um, makeup tips. You can't, you can't be like those young influencers are just like, you know, they go crazy with the contour stuff. It sticks in our lines and things because apparently we lose elasticity and moisture as we get older. How fun. Thanks for nothing. Uh, but they look great. But whoever is doing Pilot Pete, because that was at the reunion too. It was, that was too much under eye concealer. Too much Maybelline brightener. Stop him. He looks like a claymation. <laughs> He's giving Kennergy. Kennergy. Kennergies. They look like Lorax trees. Oh, fun. I like that. I like it. I like it, you guys. All right. So there is today's No Offense, All Offense. I'll be back tomorrow with another No Offense, All Offense. Um, I might go live later today or tomorrow. I do want to do another roast and recap of, uh, do I want to? No, but I probably will. Tom Sandoval's podcast. Everybody loves Tom. Now Billy is on it and they're trying to recap episodes. I'm sorry. That's what we do. We don't need you to do that. And they're horrible at it. Spoiler alert. Very bad at it. But we got to roast and recap it. Because a lot of you have messaged me about it. And I know we kind of fell off with the Tom. But there's only so much Tom Sandy butt I can listen to. Until I'm just like, take me out of this world. Um, You know. Evie me. Done. done. Pause. Uh, but I think I'm going to attempt uh, to do that. Uh, Shelly says, I need a Sandra MJ spinoff show stat. That would be really good. I wouldn't be surprised if they're on more stuff together. Apparently, Dan is now done with reality TV. He's like, see ya. But we already knew he was going to be done. He was just coming back out of retirement. So, um, Summer House. Yes. This season's pretty good. I'm going to have to talk about it. We'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll talk about it tomorrow. No offense, all offense. I'll get caught up tonight. We'll talk about Summer House tomorrow and some other trending topics and things in pop culture. If you guys have things you want me to talk about, you're always welcome to email me. You can email me, Jolene Reacts, Jolene, J-O-L-E-E-N, Reacts, R-E-A-C-T-S, at gmail.com. If there are any stories you want me to look into or any things you want me to react to, um... I think we're only three episodes into Summer House, two, three episodes, but the season's probably got, um, and we got to roast and recap it, but here is my email if you ever want to um, send me any suggestions for things you would like me to roast, recap, cover, things like that. You guys have been amazing and wonderful. Shout out to my super chatters, artists, chicken head, much, much appreciation and love, you guys, and like I said, I will be back later today, maybe, definitely tomorrow. So leave a comment after the video posts so I can hear. I don't get to get to all the comments and it helps me in the algorithm. Smash that like if you haven't already. Subscribe and always remember to enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Bye.